Bronco Light Fighters. My name is Lieutenant Nicole Crossan. I'm the 3rd Brigade Preventive Medicine Officer, uh, currently in Charlie Company 325 BSB. Today we're going to show you how to properly PMCS, clean, sanitize, and store your water containers, um, as well as how to rechlorinate them while you guys are out in the field. This is really important because we want to make sure that you guys have safe and potable water while you're out there conducting mission. Um, and today we're going to go over the simple process. Every unit size, uh, so every company size as well as troop size element is assigned a water container of some sort, whether that be the water buffalo that's behind behind me, uh, a camel or as well as a hippo and it's really important that you guys know how to maintain these while they sit out in the motor pool um, as well as how to keep them fresh for your soldiers while you're out in a deployed field environment. All right so every six months you will see a preventive medicine officer or a preventive medicine NCO um, out at your motor pool conducting sanitary inspections for your water containers. Um, so for your water buffalo specifically we're going to walk through step by step how to PMCS it. So this is going to be the things that you need to do to maintain it through throughout those six months um, so that it's ready to go for whenever you're trying to go to the field, but then also for our inspections when we come through. So the first thing that we'll do when we come to your uh, water buffalo and look at it is we'll start at the serial number, we'll annotate that. From there, we move out to the uh, spigots on both the left and the right side of the water container. Um, for those spigots, first we check the protective box on the outside. Uh, we want to make sure that it's not rusted, there's no holes in them so that, uh, you know, when they're closed, they're isn't a possibility for contaminants to come inside onto the spigots where you know people are getting their water from. We'll open those up, we'll then check the actual spigots themselves, we'll make sure that they are intact, um, that they can be depressed, and that water can flow freely through them. Um, we'll close it back up again, and on the bottom there also should be a lock. That's not as important, however it is good to have them there to secure them closed um, when you are moving this water container. So once we're done checking both sides, um, both spigots on the left and right side, we'll then go to the center of the front of the water container where we'll see the T-handle. Um, sometimes it's also in the shape of a square or sometimes um, like a gear and we just want to make sure that can easily be pulled in and out or unscrewed and screwed back in because this regulates the water flow from the water reservoir itself out to the spigots. So this is important in the event that uh, say a vehicle backs into the water, con uh, the water buffalo and breaks off one of the spigots and all the water starts pouring out. This is actually the quickest way to close off the water flow to those spigots so you don't lose your water supply while you're out in the field. So we want to make sure that that is lubricated and easily um, able to be pushed in and pulled out. From there, we'll walk around the sides of your water container where we'll make sure that potable water only is clearly printed on both sides of the water containers. Um, if it's absent entirely, we'll mark that on your uh, inspection sheet. However, uh, if it is missing some pieces or it's fading, we will ask you to re-stencil that on at a later date. From there we go to the back of the water container where the first thing we'll want to look at is the spigot on the back. We just want to make sure that it is functioning uh, and in working condition. And then from there we'll go underneath the water container to see where the drain plug is. So for the drain plug we want that to be hand tight. Um, so meaning myself or my NCO we can go under there and unscrew it and um, we'll check the threading on the drain plug itself, make sure that it's clean. We'll also look at the threading on the interior of where the drain plug was. Um, this is important again because this is the only way to act uh, sufficiently drain all the water from your water container. Um, if you just try to drain the water out using that spigot in the back, it'll never go below the water line for that um, exterior spigot. So we want to be able to make sure we can unscrew that water plug on the bottom, um, especially say for whatever reason, small animal, bird, something like that, that or the water is contaminated um, into your water buffalo. This is the quickest way to drain all the water from the container, okay? From there, we will then step up onto the sides of the water container so that we can look at the manhole on top. The first thing that we visually inspect is that the pressure relief valve, it's that bolt that sits on top of the manhole cover, um, is intact and it is not rusted through. Sometimes we see uh, those bolts so rusted through that it just ends up being a tiny little hole straight into the water container. So as you can see from that, insects and other things like that can actually get into your water container from there. We'll check that the back locks are working. Um, those are important for safety. You can lock the manhole cover in the down position and you can also lock it in the upright position. Um, so when you're cleaning it in the inside, there's no chance that it'll fall down and hit you on the head while you're doing that. We'll also check the front latches as well, just to make sure that those will properly secure the front cover of the manhole. Um, sometimes those can be really rusted uh, and are inoperable because of that. We'll open up the manhole cover, we'll put the secure um, back lock in, and then we'll check the uh, lining of the manhole cover. So it's a rubber gasket lining, we'll just make sure that it's intact and when the thing is sealed that there is no chance that outside contaminants can get into your container. From there we'll look inside your water buffalo, we're making sure that there aren't, uh, it's not, there's not 
there's no excessive rust. We're going to check that there's no um, insulation showing, um, and we're going to look and make sure that there's no soil or dirt or anything like that inside the water container. We're also looking for that general smell of bleach that really shows to us that you took the time to properly sanitize this container. Um, if you do it in the way that we're about to show you, you will definitely smell that bleach smell um, for a little bit while after cleaning your water container. All right, so now that we've properly PMCS'd our water buffalo, we're gonna go over how to clean, sanitize, and store it. So for the clean, sanitized portion, you're gonna wanna do that at the wash rack. So um, it's important that we do it here so that any discharges that we make with our water container, all those chemicals, they go into uh, a water treatment facility and don't go down our stormwater drains that go out to the ocean. So it's important you either come on in the walk-on or uh, you set up an appointment for this, okay? So the first step is going to be to clean our water container. So what that looks like is you can first take a pressure washer, spray the outside, make sure you get all that mud and gunk off, um, and then go ahead and do that for the inside as well. Once you're done that, get a long extended brush. Um, it can even be just like a new clean mop that you get from the store, uh, and you're going to take that and fill a bucket up with a mild detergent. Um, so again, at the wash rack, you're not authorized to release detergent into the drain here. Um, however, as you can see in our video, we just collected it in a bucket and then disposed of it in the grass, and that's fine as well. Um, so you're gonna take that, mops, uh, that mop itself and you're gonna go into the water container. You're gonna scrub the interior and make sure that there's no soil or residue that is in there. Once that's complete, you're gonna go ahead and rinse it out. So again, with the pressure washer, that works perfectly, um, just to make sure that there's no more detergent left in the water container itself. As you do this, you're also gonna to wanna to run some of that water through the spigots. Um, again, this is just gonna help make sure that if there is any sediment in there, they're getting you know, washed out and cleaned with that soap. Uh, once we're finished with the cleaning process, that's when we're gonna move into the sanitizing stage for our water uh, buffalo process. So what that's going to look like is you're going to take your water buffalo, you're gonna drive her down to the um, water point at your um, installation. So for us, it's down here in South Range. You're gonna fill it up all the way to the top. Once that water buffalo is filled, you can go ahead and take it back to the wash rack. Um, once you get to the wash rack, you're going to open it up and you're going to add three quarters of a gallon of 5% household bleach. Um, this should also be unscented. So again, the NSN for this is in the SOP itself. Um, so you can go ahead and find that and order it through your supply channels. So once you add that three quarter gallon of bleach, um, you're going to agitate the water in there. So whether that's you have a clean long stick to stir it up, um, or if it's you're gonna drive the water container back and forth a little bit just to make sure that water goes through it, uh, or if you, know, if you just rock it back and forth, whatever you have to do to make sure that it is properly mixed inside. Once you've done that, you're going to let some of the water flow through all of the spigots. So the four spigots in the front, as well as the one in the back. Once that's complete, um, you're going to let it sit for at least 30 minutes. That 30 minutes of contact time is important because that's about the time uh, estimated to properly disinfect some of the more harmful things that could be present in your water container. So make sure that you let it sit for 30 minutes. Once those 30 minutes are up, you're going ahead and pull the drain plug out and you're gonna let all that water run out of the water buffalo. Um, it's important that you have your water buffalo at an angle so that um, the water does all flow out through the back. You wanna make sure that you use the drain plug at the bottom of the water buffalo instead of you know, either using the spigots or that back spigot um, because the water line will never go below those spigots so you're always gonna have some kind of water left over. You wanna make sure you get everything out. Um, so that concludes the sanitizing process for the water buffalo. Once you're done with that, you wanna store it properly. Um, so the first thing you need to do is actually make sure the container itself is dry. So you're going to lock the manhole in the upright position. You will remove the drain plug and put it in a secure place where it won't get dirty. Um, and then just let it sit open if it's a dry day, um, you know, trying to put it in a place where debris or tree leaves aren't going to fall in it and let it completely air dry. Once it's dry uh, and you also release the water from the spigots, any remaining water, um, you're going to close it back up, put the drain plug back in so it's only hand tight and your water buffalo will be ready for your next field exercise or your next preventive medicine inspection. Hey Bronco Light Fighters. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the process of rechlorinating your water buffalo. So say you've been in the fields for a couple days, your water buffalo is still relatively full um, or you just got refilled by a hippo or a camel. Um, your field sanitation team is going to be testing the chlorine residual in this water container at least twice a day. So once in the morning, once in the afternoon. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process of how do you test that water. And then if you find that it does need to be redosed, meaning adding more chlorine to the water container, um, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to 
do that. So what you'll need to test the water itself is a pair of gloves just so we can keep it sanitary and then also some sort of water quality test strips. So this is the kind that I have that comes in my field sanitation team kit uh, that you can order through the NSN that's in the SOP. Um, and basically it has a bunch of different metrics for measuring the quality of the water but all you're concerned about is going to be um, the second pad right here. So for mine it's the free chlorine pad, okay? So what I'm looking for uh, is that it reads in between one and two parts per million or milligram per liter, either one. So basically once I follow the instructions, so for this one says to uh, run underneath running water for 20 seconds, I will then let it sit, Don't I won't shake the water off of it, and then I will align it so that the pad, the free chlorine pad is lined up on here, and I will read the chlorination, okay? So now we'll go ahead and do this process. I'll also let the water from the spigot run a few seconds, just so I know that the water I'm testing is actually from the container itself and not just the pipes. So let it run, and then I'll get ahead and hold it underneath. Five, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so 20 seconds has elapsed. Um, once I look at it, I can compare it to my um, actual residual that's left in there. And as you can see, there is currently zero chlorine in there. So what we're going to do is make a solution, like a bleach solution, and then we're going to add it to the container, um, let it sit for a little bit, run some of that water through the pipes, and then go ahead and test the water again. So to make this solution, what you're going to need is a canteen cup, half full of water. Um, you're going to need a bottle of calcium hypochlorite. So that's just a really fancy word for powdered bleach, basically. Again, all of these items are going to come in your field sanitation team kit. And then also this tiny half gram spoon. Um, so again, this is included. It comes in a bag with maybe five of them. So what I'll do now is I'm going to take five half gram spoonfuls and add it into the half filled canteen cup. I'm going to mix it around to make a slurry. And once I do that, I'm going to go up to the manhole and then add that in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Keep in mind, this stuff is pretty toxic, so don't be, you know, be sniffing it and breathing it in. Um, it's not gonna be good for you. So, one, two, three, four, and five. So another thing that's important to note is that you fill up your canteen cup, and then you're going to want to add the uh, actual calcium hypochlorite. The reason for that is because it'll make it more diluted so there's less chance of there being some kind of crazy reaction. So now I'm just going to go ahead and mix this slurry. You want the particles to be pretty dissolved um, because it is corrosive so if you put this and it sinks to the bottom of the water buffalo um, it can actually cause it to rust a little bit. So. All right, so that's pretty mixed. I'm gonna put this stuff down. Okay, so next I'm just gonna pop up here again. <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna take my slurry and then I'm just going to add the entire thing to the water container. And that is that. So at this time, um, we'll close it up. And you're going to want to agitate this water in some way. So whether that's just rocking it back and forth or if you want to drive it around, um, just to make sure that it's properly dissolved. <clears throat> Once you have it mixed and agitated, um, you're going to want to run some of it through the pipes. So the spigots in the front. So. We'll let this go for a little bit. All right, we'll go to the other side. You can even get some through the back spigot. Mm. 
and then on the other side. All right, so once you're complete with that, you will wait 30 minutes and then you'll go ahead and test the water again and make sure that it is between one and two part per million. So we'll go ahead and check that again right now and see. All right, so 20 seconds underneath the running water. I can go ahead and compare it to my test strip again. At this time, it looks like it is in between the one and two part per million range, um, which means that this is good. This water can be distributed to the unit level. So thank you. All right, so thank you for joining me today um, for how to properly PMCS clean, sanitize, uh, store, as well as rechlorinate your water buffaloes. I hope this video is helpful for anyone um, who is going to the field or is about to do their semi-annual preventive medicine inspection. Um, for any more information, if you have questions or want more resources, go ahead and contact your brigade preventive medicine representatives and we will definitely help you out.